Now, uh, Professor Kontakino Tadaitis has so many accomplishments that it's impossible to keep uh, them uh, without reading some. So coming from City University of London as a professor in the Department of Civil Engineering, School of Mathematics, Computer Science and Engineering, it's uh, focusing lately on more than static, quasi static and dynamic full and large scale laboratories laboratory-based testing of steel and steel concrete composite structural members and systems. Now he is expanding his experimental research portfolio including timber, fiber reinforced concrete and many other structural members. Besides publishing more than 170 paper in journal and international conference, He's also an inventor and filed a number of patents on perforated steel beams and lightweight composite flooring systems. In 2019, Professor Zakaridis was awarded with a senior fellowship of the Royal Academy of Engineering to study and develop a novel type of 3D printing, printed steel connections of modular building systems that allow not only for flexibility in design but also the reuse via dismantling capacity. With a lot of other participation in scientific committees, international committees, on many fields in civil engineering, uh, he also um, obtained a very large fund for increasing uh, the capacity of experimental research. And the title of the presentation today will regard the art, not only the science, of modular connections, which is a new way of thinking. Professor Tataridis, deeply thank you for your involvement, engagement in this conference and please address uh, a message regarding the beginning of this uh, event that is no longer just a scientific one but it's a full forum and please continue with your presentation. First of all, thank you very much for the very kind introduction. Um, I'm very glad being here for a second time. Uh, my first time was the 2019 conference, so um, I'm, uh, uh, I feel like home uh, in Yash. And um, it is a great honor to be invited again to give a keynote speech. Um, I would like to thank all the organizers of this conference, um, the ones uh, that we have run all these last months in order to make it happen. I know how difficult it is actually to run a conference and how much organization requires. So thank you very much Paul. And I would like to uh, thank all the participants, the ones making presentations, as the ones that they are going to uh, listen and participate in these talks. So, conferences are um, maybe closer to that. I talk. Uh, conferences are um, the platforms where uh, exchange ideas can take place. Um, uh, very interesting intellectual dialogue, dialogues, and where people can think outside the box and test their ideas. So, I feel conferences are look like a test beds of discussion because this is exactly where you have the opportunity to say something which is outside the box, outside the norm. And with my presentation today, I'm going to try also to challenge a little bit of that. So I know it's a very first presentation, it's going to be around 40 minutes or so, and we still have a long way to go for this conference. So I don't want to bother you too much with the technical stuff, but I'll try my best to make it as um, enthusiastic, if you like, as 
as filing as possible. So, very of me on that. So, um, the title of the presentation is The Art of the uh, Modular Connections, a new way of thinking. And I will try to link, to connect several topics, several very important topics all together. And I hope that by the end of the presentation, I'll make you think slightly different about buildings per se. So, first of all, let's start with what are the challenges of our industry, where we are and what, we, what kind of problems we have. And uh, one of the very important ones is the project delays. In the construction industry, we do have significant project delays that are costing a lot of money to the governments, to the companies uh, in the sector. The second most important problem is the non-conforming materials, materials that are not certified and with the stringent regulations coming into place, those materials are not qualified any further, so we cannot really use them. An excellent example of that is what happened in the Grenfell uh, Tower in London when they, uh, we realized after that very significant effect uh, of the fire that most of the materials that we used were not um, appropriate. The reduced quality and uh, the workplace productivity as well as the safety on site are also very important topics. So we need to do something about that and apparently in the last decades we haven't done much. So we know that at the same time there is a productivity challenge. We are moving very slowly in our sector as opposed to what is happening in other sectors like in uh, automotive or aerospace, mechanical engineering. Construction is always seen as the latest one and the slowest one of all. So there is a trend to increase the productivity up to 10x, so quite a lot. And a lot of different organizations that came up with these very interesting um, uh, destructive technologies that we should be putting actually in our portfolios, starting with digital design engineering, and today's conference is on digital. Um, the new materials and systems, because you've seen that we are using very classic materials from the last centuries, and the advanced manufacturing automation, which fosters collaboration with other disciplines. The fact is that steel and cement that we've been using for all these years, they are very energy intensive materials to produce. So we need to do something about that. We've also um, realized by now that a part of reducing how much we build and how much we spend materials, reusing the materials is one of the most sustainable ways to go forward. So we are moving away from recycling materials. And at the moment there is only 6% of the structural materials out there that we reuse. 93% is recycled and 1% is buried into the ground. So we haven't done well, although we know these things for the last years. As an example, on the ground on the left, you can see that the global consumption of steel is increasing over the last years, and equally the global scrap consumption is also increasing. So we know things, but we haven't done anything. We are improving. I have sat in many different organizations, in many different committees, forums, and we're always talking about sustainability, but really we haven't done much. At the same time, there is an increasing housing demand, especially in the mega cities, the large cities of the world, where the land plots are very small, buildings are raising higher and higher in order to accommodate all this housing demand. So it is a kind of a race game, but also it is a need to go for higher buildings. And it's not only happening in the large cities and mega cities of the world, it's happening to most of the cities of the world. For instance, Leeds, where I used to live for almost a decade, you can see that over the last 15-20 years, the population is increasing, and only between two years, 2017-2019, you can see how the city centre's skyline has changed, with more new buildings popping up. 
So um, it's a problem, and we haven't done much about it. Again, I'm trying to make it as important as possible. So a question to all of you, how much time do you think that we spend in buildings? Do you want to give it a guess? Will stand there forever and they will 
have multiple purposes. Let's look at what's happening for tall buildings. Since 1970s to 2020s, now uh, high-rise buildings, skyscrapers, to me they look pretty similar. The only difference is that we have used a different facade system. The rest is pretty much the same. So, if I'm thinking about that, to my eyes, it's like this whole building, a very fixed purpose building that's built 100 years ago or 200 years ago, and it doesn't even look that nice. So actually, we have done worse than 200 years ago we were doing. We haven't really advanced much, not to mention that we use exactly the same materials, maybe a higher grade of steel and a slightly better concrete with some additives inside, but nothing more than that. So how do we perceive the future buildings, the buildings of the future? How do we think that the future buildings look like? And I know that these are some futuristic kind of drawings, but believe it or not, in a few decades, sooner or later, buildings will look like this. Because these are the so-called vertical cities that we are talking about. These are the buildings that, like Chad GPT told us, we'll be living in. So we'll spend our time, we'll create civilization, and we will be near to each other, but still living in these kind of structures. Today's knowledge of how to make structures doesn't really help us to design something like that. So just to make it clear, buildings will be multi-purpose. They will allow for flexibility and adaptability over time, so you will not have to demolish the building in order to build a new one, which is a very energy intense and cost expensive uh, process. But you will be able to repurpose and recondition the buildings. You will be able to easily maintain and retrofit it and deconstruct it in a very controlled manner. So think about buildings as live entities. It's not going to be there for 50 years and then it's going to be taken down, but it will change forms over the time. So like buildings also age, like human beings do. So the human beings age, and when we age, we need a, something like a walking stick. The walking stick is what? Is the stability system in our buildings. Is the lack of fitting that we may need to do in our buildings. But think about it, we have a building like those futuristic that I saw before, the, the, the buildings of the future. Will we be able to add the stability system 50 years later? Most probably not. So what makes this old man need that stability system? It's probably, as you can also see from the figure of the old man, that the connections, the joints of that old man, they're becoming sore, they're becoming stiff. So he's not as flexible as he used to be as a young man. So we need to pay much more attention to the connections. We need to pay attention to the joints. And joints are actually the areas where a lot of stress is concentrated in the structures. We need to pay more attention to the stability system than paying to the actual connections of the system. So, Uh, 
are actually designed. And connections to the line for spray allow for swaying movements for control over the structure, making the structure stiffer or more flexible to allow for some movements, release of forces, harvest some kinematic energy and turn that kinematic energy to uh, other forms of energy for the building. We can do that through the connections and of course allow for disassembly and reusability. We're trying to find ways of thinking about these connections and I think um, I cannot think of anything more resilient than the cargo containers on seas. These kind of structures, they can take any sort of load. Uh, you can see high dynamic loads are still there, standing there. So modular structures and Lego structures are very important and we have to think of them much more um, uh, seriously. I've also used, I uh, hope I think to deliver to use um, the conferences uh, Lego Structure logo there. So Lego Structures is what we call more modular structures under the MMC, the Modern Methods of Construction, and the pinnacle of that MMC is actually the modular structures. So modular has come to stay, the market is increasing all the time, uh, at the beginning it was only residential, nowadays it's commercial, it's going to hospitality, education, there are a lot of schools, a lot of universities around the world that are built with modular, and the market is growing in a very rapid way. And for those that are not familiar with modular construction, there are a lot of benefits to many of you who reduce deliveries, less destruction in cities, quality control, and the most important is that we save time, in other words, we save money, we save costs. So, in the UK, there is a pipeline of housing demand of 500 tall buildings to be built in the next 10 years. 80% of them will be built in London. So, there is no way to accommodate all these buildings and design them and construct them in the traditional ways of we construct buildings today. So, the only way forward is actually being built as modular buildings. And London in particular has done quite a lot of that. So although we are not the most active um, in, in uh, modular construction around the world, for instance, Nordic countries, they have done more than London and UK. In London, we are the most active in building tall modular buildings. At the moment, we are using this um, uh, common course in the middle as well, which they slow down the construction a little bit. But in the future, self-standing modular buildings um, will be built. So now we are changing the construction, the very time-consuming construction process of a building in the city center, like London, to installation. So you see, you're already thinking differently. Things can be done off-site, can be brought straight to the site, and can be built in a very fast pace. And for that we need, of course, special connections. And it, it's not only going for tall buildings. Um, um, there are other many novel applications for modular construction, such as when we're retrofitting and rehabilitating old structures. Think about it. You do not have to construct a new building within an existing old structure and may affect the uh, the stability of the old structure, but you can just put there a few modules connecting to each other in a very special way and make a new structure. So there are a lot of applications for modular construction. Now let's move back to this reuse concept that I mentioned at the beginning and I said that we haven't done a lot to them and try to connect all that. So I'm sure you were aware of that battle of SpaceX and NASA a few years ago, who is going to win the space? And of course, everybody thought that NASA, which is a well-funded US organization, will win what happened and what, what is happening in the, in the space. However, SpaceX brought the reuse concept into the play, which was to reuse the rockets to be able to use the material. So it opened up a new business model 
in this model that we can also get for our industry, the construction industry, and apply it to be successful. So at the end of the day, between these two, NASA wanted to actually work with uh, SpaceX. So the use is a concept that we can apply in Mozilla in a very systematic way. However, there are some barriers, some problems, and one of them is that Mozilla systems are quite complex. Yes, they are produced in factories, so under controlled environments, like you're producing a car, but they are quite complex systems. And the connections in particular, they are designed for transportation, installation, deconstruction. So you have to think about a lot of things when you design those connections. We did a recent study in which we wanted to find how many different connections there are out there for modular buildings. And only within a couple of years, we found out that there are more than 60 different joints that they are proposed by academics, industry, different manufacturers. So if that's the, the case, all these 60 joints, all that 60 different design connections, they are fighting each other. So we're not going to be able to capitalize on the modular construction and the potential for use of modular because of all these fighting each other, their competitors. So what we have to do, the answer is simple. We have to standardize the connections. And this is where our project came into life back in 2019. The uh, program that was funded by the Royal Academy of Engineering is called 3D MPC. And the work that I will go through that is actually the uh, independent center of the modular construction we use and standardized connections. So we've done quite a lot of work on the development of standardized state connections for steel modular buildings. We started from uh, playing around with different types of connections that can work with many different manufacturers of the volume metrics, the modular, the one that is produced in the factory. We try to use uh, different materials, we try to optimize the performance of the material. I would say that uh, we've played with more than a hundred different designs overall, or, or concepts of designs. And uh, finally we came up with a uh, highly sophisticated hybrid system. Uh, we call it hybrid the USIG, Interconnected uh, Modular Connection. And it's made by three different materials. Materials that sometimes we don't use, at least they're obvious, such as the safe memory alloys, so they pin the middle made by SMA and some rubber bearings and a system that can overperform but at the same time can be designed for pretty much all the modules out there. I'm not going to say too much because later on today uh, Dan, my PhD student, will actually go through that in a more meticulous way. But we have thought about these connections also um, in a way that the connections themselves can be used in order to reduce the material that we use in structures. So, as I said before, we don't need to have stability systems. We don't even have to have a concrete core. We can use the connections to play with the performance of the structure, to control the structure. So we've done quite a lot of sophisticated structures where, uh, sorry, studies where, um, this is not so clear, but where we managed to reduce a lot the material usage of a modular building by playing with the properties of the connection. Moreover, we built frameworks in which uh, we, you can use to uh, design a building under high wind loads in both directions, in all directions, and minimize the weight of the buildings. So we're trying to put, again, the connection in the epicenter of what we're doing. So the connection is the one that will control pretty much everything. It's not just a, a typical uh, connection that connects members. We work also the development of uh, standardized connections for timber modular paintings. Timber is a material that, as we all know, is a biomaterial will be used quite a lot in the future. Already companies are using it in the mass. And we realized that there are some problems, such as that the connection between steel and uh, timber is quite weak, 
most of the typical air brackets and plates that they are used to get back to pretty easily. And also, in order to be able to connect those members, you need to have access holes, like you can see on the bottom left, where engineers have to get inside and make the connections. So we had to rethink the way that modular timber are connected. And when I say modular timber, I'm talking about volumetric as well as panelized, like you can see on the left. So we came up with a new connection we patented, but also a new concept of installation of those modular buildings. And those are picked up by the industry very, very quickly and you know they're thinking of actually changing the way that these buildings are constructed. So these type of connections that we came up with, they don't need any sort of screwing or bolting on site. It's just uh, sliding two plates on top of each other and interlocked when they reach the end. So we've done a number of tests and we found, we found out also that uh, if you ever want to remove those connections at the end of the lifetime of that building, um, we haven't damaged the timber panels, which means that the timber panels can be reused. So whatever you see under the green is um, after we remove the screws, and whatever you see under the red one is the old style connections where the timber fibers are actually damaged, meaning that those panels cannot be reused any further. And on top of that, we also managed to have no need for those access holes, so we brought closer the ceiling and the floor, um, and we gave a new space and we provided better insulation uh, between the two, and a less expensive one. Furthermore, we have been working uh, in order to elevate the connection properties for idealized uh, performance, which is something that, again, most of the standard structural civil engineers they work with the classic material steel and concrete they haven't uh, done much work on. So, for instance, we're getting uh, inspired by the interlocked connections and the equilibrium structures, and we're trying to apply those techniques for our connections in order again to control the performance of the structures. We have looked at the possibility of using functionally integrated materials that they have a very young modules and density in order to control the performance of specific components of the connections uh, and give it the stiffness that we want. We have been inspired and we've been using the cellular periodic materials for seismic isolators, something that has been already used um, and we are um, actually having a project where we are testing three repeated cellular periodic materials, as well as the materials with negative stiffness, uh, which can be used as uh, base isolators. So we take it also to another level where we think completely outside of the box. We come closer with the material scientists and the mechanical engineers, and we're trying to apply all these into like one design that will control the performance of the structure. Finally, phase change materials and adaptive structures um, uh, that they have the ability to adjust in different um, uh, environments and different conditions. They stiffen in a different way and again these kind of properties they can give us uh, better performance. So to conclude the presentation almost, um, I would like to say that at the 3D MC program, which is the 3-dimensional modular building connection program, is split into three themes. Uh, we are working on the digital design, the DFMA, things that are also presented and this uh, conference is all about. We're working on the novel materials and systems beyond the classic materials and the underdeveloped materials that most of us are using in our everyday life. And we're also uh, working on the construction automation since we're thinking a lot about the off-site manufacturing and the on-site installation. So not construction, but installation. A very quick, seamless way of building structures which are safe. So we're trying, of course, to uh, improve the, uh, the, the time, reduce the CO2 emissions, and reduce the waste uh, as much as possible. So things that we have been working on, advanced uh, modular building systems and assembly techniques, and we're 
looking things beyond the thing that is still also uh, a, a panelized systems that are made uh, by foam and by uh, other materials like plastic based materials. Uh, we are looking at high performance uh, materials that are lightweight, they are fire resistant, they are affordable and um, they can be very durable and environmental friendly in order to be able to be reused several times. We are looking about designing for manufacturing and assembly of combining what we are doing with the connections, so changing the actual panel and the way that the panels are made because of the way that the connections are installed in the panels, like the example I gave before for the um, timber uh, panelized and modular construction. So we're trying to embed those connections into the um, engineered timber, the way that they are made. We're doing quite a lot of design and, and testing and, and system optimization, especially with our partners in different countries. And lastly, uh, we, we do, as I said, uh, all that in order to be able to optimize the on-site construction or installation processes. So we have partners that we are working on um, IoT and measuring all sorts of ways of building and improvement the construction methodologies. So beyond the connections, uh, all the other things. So I'm almost closing the presentation by this again uh, comic futuristic sort of approach of what the building is. I found that online but I used it because I like that at, in the center of that it, they saw a building which is pretty much a modular building. So anyone you find out there and they will, uh, you will ask uh, what is the building of the future, in their mind they have something that it is almost modular if not modular per se. So um, all the things that uh, you know, we'll hear at this conference, and this conference is all about, so the IoT, the digital engineering, the B, all that can be applied in a very easy way with modular construction. So I want you to think about modular construction and how that can be used together along with all the other things that you will see, you will hear today and tomorrow. Um, and I would like just to bring on the plate a, an idea, uh, maybe some food for thought uh, and some discussions later on today um, on the normal concept of a hybrid modular building system. But this is not a hybrid connection, we're talking about a new system here, where there is going to be a platform structure, a permanent structure that hosts the modules that are changeable and simply you can take your house and go away and you can come back with your house if you want to so you can, you can be quite mobile you can be anywhere in the world and even if you divorce you can take half of your house and disappear <laughs> so um, this concept uh, although is uh, at a very early on stage uh, it's going through some very serious discussions with leaders in the, in the field and organizations that actually uh, deciding how, how things will be done in the future. I could not finish the presentation without acknowledging our partners. We have many of them, a lot of companies, a lot of universities that we work with and we co-create. And for anyone who wants to know a little more about what we do in our program, the Freddy NBC, you can scan the code or you can just uh, type freddyabc.com and uh, you can find us online and all the uh, papers and all the work is actually, is actually there. With that, I would like to end the presentation and thank you very much for your visit.
become a full reality in every country. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. It is, uh, it is quite inspiration, of course. Um, at the same time, it's heavy, I think. And we have to work, many of us, to not to review the steps, but to learn the lessons you are suggesting. Because it's no way so many construction, not necessarily in Santa Lada, but wherever else in the world, in large cities, are going to continue the traditional technologies. And in a way, I think contractors will be happy with the hybrid modular system easy for everyone, it's difficult for everyone, <laughs> and it's difficult not only for engineers, I think it's difficult for the regular builders as well. It's a very steep learning curve for everyone, I believe. We leave that there. Yes, we do. Thank you very much again.